Welcome back. Now, I've had the pleasure of hearing our next speaker talk many times. His insight into robotics and intelligent automation is fantastic. And importantly, he always leaves listeners with food for thought, practical advice and key takeaways. Today, Tobias is going to be talking to us about how Siemens is combining all manner of innovative technology, cognitive automation, AI, RPA, machine learning, to create a truly intelligent enterprise, which is more efficient and better serves Siemens customers. Tobias is Head of Innovation, Digitalization and Benchmarking at Siemens Global Shared Services, where he's been instrumental in their intelligent automation project. Welcome, Tobias. Hello and thanks for joining. My name is Tobias Onger. I'm from Siemens Shared Services. I'm Head of Innovation, Digitalization and Benchmarking. And uh, in my session today, I want to introduce you to what we consider Robotics 2.0, so combining cognitive technology with RPA. I'm joining you from the Cognitive Automation Conference uh, from IQPC here in Berlin, so I'm sorry for any background noise. I hope that will not cause any inconvenience. Just a quick overview of Siemens Shared Services so that you can see where we're active. We have basically five business lines um, and 10 centers around the globe. We are doing um, transactional accounting, we are doing transactional procurement, we're doing HR support, business administration, and uh, also uh, shared services for business unit like marketing and sales back office support, and also expert services. I'm active in the uh, joint shared service platform, which is the only horizontal layer. Uh, and basically you can see that there with the point robotics process automation center of expertise. So we have uh, already scaled RPA at Siemens. We have uh, three delivery units ac across the globe um, and we are producing RPA bots on a daily basis. And now the next step for us is really to tap the cognitive automation potential. For us, it's very important um, to show that our automation strategy is a very structured approach. And um, it's very important to me that um, everything we do, being it on an ERP, on a middle layer, or on a smart automation level, is at some point coordinated. Why is that important? Um, when we talk about automation, yeah, that's not only a game that you play with RPA or machine learning, but you have to consider your entire technology stack. And uh, I mean this, when you consider your uh, current technical landscape in your company, uh, is a pretty complex matter. But in order to take smart decisions regarding the investment, uh, for example, where to implement RPA, uh, where you can really leverage benefits with that technology, you have to understand all the technology layers below. Um, RPA for us is an addition to an existing toolbox of automation possibilities and machine learning will broaden this scope, bring another tool to the toolbox. But again, it's very important to highlight the differences between uh, automation on an ERP level, automation on a middle layer slash business process management platform level and what we do with uh, what we call uh, smart automation. Why is this important? Very easy example. Um, when you are investing in a new ERP template, for example, in US for HANA Finance, um, you might reconsider what you do with RPA or any on, on other any other layer above that in order to not um, basically work twice in the same area. Uh, but there is a clear uh, rule to follow. Uh, first, you look at what happens on the ERP side, then you look what happens on the business process management slash middle layer side. And considering all this, you basically define your smart automation um, strategy with RPA and with machine learning. The development of smart automation for us really started with using macros just a long time ago. So um, everybody with a technical background knows that also RPA is re not really something new considering um, from a technology standpoint. Um, and we use all these technologies um, in the area of smart automation, um, now exploring then also the cognitive side. What's the key difference? Um, for us, a macro can automate a um, certain time of a person or certain tasks of a person. And that really helps uh, to um, increase productivity. But it's very confined 
to a certain environment, which is uh, Excel. Uh, it can access some applications, but only from a desktop of this person. Yeah? There uh, now comes then also robotic desktop automation, which is uh, basically a screen scrapping recording solution uh, where individuals can, uh, with from their uh, PC, from their technical environment, with their own user accounts, basically automate some routine tasks they were doing, which also helps productivity and uh, provides a broader scope of automation possibilities compared to, uh, for example, Excel macros. Um, and also from a visibility and from an audit perspective, um, it's much safer because it's uh, normally done uh, via one professional uh, software. Now comes robotic uh, process automation, which for us really was the game changer. Uh, and uh, what's the difference to desktop automation? Uh, RPA um, runs on a central server, so it's not using the uh, technical environment of any person. Um, the bots have their own user accounts um, and they run via virtual machines, uh, but completely in a separate environment. Uh, so um, it's uh, not run from a PC by a person, but it's really run in the background, taking over a lot of the work that uh, formerly was done uh, by um, uh, the person itself. And uh, it helps us to uh, really automate manual tasks on a large scale in a very secure and very um, uh, technically lean environment. With Machine learning, we see the next step coming. Uh, um, from an IT infrastructure perspective, it's mostly cloud-based solutions. Um, but the range of potential tasks that these tools can handle is much bigger than uh, what RPA can do today. We always say RPA today is capable of replacing the hand, uh, but um, machine learning in the future will be able to replace some cognitive abilities like natural language understanding. And this broadens our automation scope and we want to leverage uh, all lessons learned we have uh, gathered in the RPA area and also our global setup that we currently have to um, really produce bots at scale and inject the new technological possibilities here um, that are coming with machine learning and uh, cognitive automation. I always like to show this digitalization formula uh, because for me it's really an abstract summary of, uh, of uh, what's happening. Um, you have the big dinosaurs, the ERP systems, you, where you need to invest a lot of money and also, I mean, you can't stay on one ERP version forever, you have to invest money there, but it's uh, big projects, uh, slow projects. Yeah? Um, then you can go to middle layer yeah, uh, as said, um, we focus at the moment really on RPA and machine learning. And you also have to consider uh, automated uh, interfaces uh, like invoicing or also like uh, blockchain. Uh, this basically defines the, the uh, complete toolbox that we have on the, on the automation side. And um, you have to be very thoughtful in combining all these possibilities, uh, but still uh, for us, technology only does not do the trick, but uh, what's really important is that our people um, take part of this journey. Uh, we are not driving, uh, especially RPA machine learning, we're not driving this in a, in a centralized platform-based approach uh, with uh, basically a big project coming top down and being rolled out globally. That's what we would expect in the European BPM environment. But we are really driving this uh, together with uh, our people uh, within shared services and uh, very closely together with our customers because these are more like small, quick, lean, fast initiatives um, and uh, in order to tap the full potential, so uh, to identify areas where to apply robots, etc., there's no better, really, there's no better source than our employees themselves. Uh, um, providing us feedback which daily tasks they want to be automated and also supporting us in uh, building and uh, then afterwards uh, maintaining uh, the robots uh, because uh, an RPA bot will always be a part of uh, the team of somebody. Uh, it will be fully integrated like any normal employee and it needs daily care in terms of uh, exception handling, etc., uh, in order to um, provide a good service to our end customers. So all this together uh, for me is basically uh, all these are ingredients um, to our automation and innovation journey.
So in very concrete terms, what do we want to do? And uh, What are we currently piloting? Um, combining the hand with uh, some um, very, at the moment, limited and defined parts of the brain, uh, uh, like uh, the part that um, uh, interprets and understands language. And we could use that, for example, um, to combine a chatbot with an RPA bot or to automatically process inbound emails um, in the future also to um, uh, understand voice uh, and have uh, uh, good uh, human-like conversations uh, with an end user. And why is that uh, uh, so, so important? Because it really broadens the scope of uh, automation possibilities. Uh, today, you have to have uh, very structured input channels. You have to have very structured uh, data input in order to feed RPA bots uh, or um, in order to, uh, you have to gather this information, for example, via uh, predefined masks in workflows. Uh, uh, whereas in the future, you might be able to um, just get the data closer really to the person uh, um, and to the request, to the specific intent uh, via having this transformational ability of natural language understanding in between. And there's a key difference uh, between uh, all the other solutions, even RPA that are there today and cognitive systems that will be there in the future, which is uh, also an RPA bot, the same as an ERP system, the same as any uh, workflow. They are programmatic systems, so they work exactly according to the code. Um, I mean, RPA, of course, is a pretty easy to code. Uh, it's a uh, what you see is what you get environment. Uh, it's, it's like uh, drafting process flows, whereas ERP programming, of course, is a little bit more uh, techy. But in the end, I mean, um, the code defines exactly what the machine does. Uh, and there is uh, basically no um, uh, real threat that the machine will do anything unexpected. This changed a little bit with cognitive technologies. Uh, with machine learning because there you train a machine really on data sets uh, and get a probabilistic outcome of what happens. And um, that's also for us very interesting uh, in terms of combina combining cognitive systems with RPA because uh, on the one hand side, we have the entire interpretation part, uh, translating language to structured data. On the other hand, we have a very secure deterministic solution like RPA that then can take over really um, the action. Uh, behind. So what have we done so far? Uh, we have implemented um, sort of proof of concepts and we are currently in a, still in a prototyping phase in order to enable um, a channel, uh, a chat channel and an email channel um, that uh, basically gets digested by a central um, natural language processing platform um, and then hands over specific data either to an RPA bot to take some action or directly performs database queries. Um, this is a very important aspect because we have found out that um, interaction is important when you talk natural language processing. Um, two examples here, when our clerks receive an email uh, from a customer uh, with specific requests like send me an invoice copy or uh, uh, please send me an account statement or please change my master data, etc. Uh, um, people who write an email tend to give all the required information uh, to, the, uh, to the other side so that an action can be performed. Uh, so normally if you process emails, you get all the uh, uh, entities and variables that you need in order to really perform the action. Um, but sometimes, you know, the information is incomplete, you have to ask back, and also this process you have to consider in the entire automation journey. So that's where chat comes in. Uh, during a chat, you have the possibility to interact with the individual directly. So I'm not sending an email uh, back and forth, but you have shorter tailed sentences and you can start aggregating information via a, a smart chat protocol uh, in order to get all the context variables that you need that uh, for the RPA bot to run afterwards. Uh, and that's um, a process then that at the end requires the chatbot already to have uh, some contact with the, with the data source uh, in order to validate whether the gathered information really is, has the right quality and is, has the right content uh, in order that an RPA bot afterwards can perform an action. Uh, so that's um, some of the content uh, we are working on. Uh, 
um, and uh, we have some very compelling use cases in this environment. Um, on the RPA side, as I said, we have a, a solution at global scale um, that we are using. Uh, and now the entire left part, uh, the, the um, natural language digestion, um, that's really the new part where we are currently um, building up uh, our infrastructure and um, also having uh, like the real big platform uh, players involved here. Going forward, um, we see a lot of potential, uh, especially in the area, for example, of uh, sentiment analysis and uh, additional stuff that uh, you can do when processing uh, natural language. Um, but at the moment, we are really in a very agile way focusing on the release 1.0 for combining the chat and email channel uh, with our RPA. This here is uh, one exemplary use case in order to make it a little bit more uh, transparent. Um, so on the top of the slide, what you can see is how a service works today. So some agent, uh, it's a front office agent, gets a call, gets an email uh, and has to basically interpret what's the intent behind. So what does the um, requester want? Uh, and also which um, entities were provided. So uh, uh, like account number, uh, like from whom did, did the email come, etc. in order then to perform a certain action via front end uh, application. Uh, and this is a process that uh, if you have a good call center, yeah, it's quick. Uh, if you have um, uh, no call center uh, and it comes to real accounting clerk and it's part of his daily job, it can take a little bit longer. Uh, if you have distributed system landscapes, etc., it can be pretty complex and um, it's not a direct interaction. And in the future, what we envision is more uh, a self-service. Uh, so a direct interaction via chatbot that then uh, does the trick of directly providing this information because we figured out that uh, 10 to 15% of our uh, activities, to, to transaction activities in accounting are really not related to uh, performing the operational process like posting an invoice or uh, um, uh, posting some, uh, some cash, etc. But it's related to answering uh, customer queries, uh, so uh, status queries or, or uh, uh, master data change, etc. And we're really looking forward of uh, also tapping then this side of um, the uh, automation potential that we were not yet able to tap uh, on an ERP level or on a, on a um, middle layer level, uh, because that's where the operational processes run. Uh, but um, the, for example, the entire email request, etc. Um, you would have no possibility to really automate that on the lower level. So we are very much looking forward of uh, combining RPA with uh, cognitive systems here. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope uh, that I could shed some light on where Siemens Shed Services is currently working on. I'm looking forward of uh, maybe getting some requests and, uh, and questions uh, from your side. Uh, it was a pleasure. Um, having this opportunity to have this slot with you. And I'm looking forward to see you on the one other conference. Thank you. Thank you, Tobias, for another great presentation. For those of you that have questions, please see Tobias in the live chat room or add him on LinkedIn. We'll now take a short networking break. Once you've had a chance to grab a coffee, um, take the opportunity to visit our exhibition hall and fill up your swag bag with free content, interviews, and other useful resources. We're also doing some live polling, so if you want to benchmark your progress in AI against the market, then please fill in our poll. Um, you'll see this in the blue bar at the top of your screen. I'll see you back here at 3.30pm GMT.